Hey everybody, welcome to Eagles Game Plan presented by Toyota. I am John Clark along with Ike Reese and Mike Quick. It is the Super Bowl. Eagles and Chiefs, what a matchup. And when you give these coaches time to prepare, they are magnificent. Andy Reid is 28 and four off a of bye week. Nick Sirianni, not bad, three and oh. So what are you guys looking at this matchup? Patrick Mahomes, yeah. MVP, most passing yards in the NFL. How tough of a challenge is this going to be for the birds? Oh, he's a huge challenge. And everyone in the National Football League, they realize how good this guy is as a player. Now, he was hurt three weeks ago, and he hasn't played now for two weeks. I don't think that injury is going to be a problem. I think it's Patrick Mahomes, and you have to expect the best out of Patrick Mahomes. So defensively, you really have to mix things up. You can't give him the same look all the time. You've got to show him something pre-snap, roll into different things just so that he's got a lot to think about and give this defense time to really get to him, speed up the rhythm, tempo, and get to Patrick Mahomes. All right, and if Patrick Mahomes is having a big day, Travis Kelsey is usually on the other end of a lot of those targets, and you need to know where he's at at all times. Won't be a one-on-one -on -one matchup in most situations. There's gonna either be bracket coverage or some type of help over the top. And Travis Kelsey, not only does he line up at the end of the line like normal tight ends do, he'll line up as an X, he'll line up in a slot position, he'll even line up in the back field in a wildcat position. Knowing with number 87, Travis Kelsey is at it all times. It's the first thing these guys have to do when the Chiefs offensive huddle breaks. Yeah, and in two playoff games this postseason, he's got 21 catches and three touchdowns. How is he so wide open a lot of the times? Well, Greg Cosell is going to look into that. Here is Enemy Intel presented by Golden Nugget Jewelers. We know that when you play the Kansas City Chiefs, you must defend Travis Kelsey. If you don't, you're in for a long day. The Eagles know this, but it's not just Kelsey the player. It's what the Chiefs do schematically with him that poses some issues for defenses. And they have a staple concept. They've been running it with Kelsey for years. It's what we call flood. It's a three-level stretch concept. It's three routes to the same side of the field, a vertical route, an intermediate route and a flat route. Now, Kelsey runs the intermediate route, but it's how they get to it and what it does to the defense that's so interesting. So let's start with how they run it against a zone defense. Here, Kelsey is on the opposite side of where he'll end up. So we call this flood opposite because he will cross the formation on his intermediate route. Patrick Mahomes is under center. This will be play action. There will also be jet action across the formation away from the flood. That's a lot of eye candy to sort out for second level defenders. So you can see now the three level stretch element. You can see the outside receiver running the post route that eats up the corner to that side. You see the flat defender have to react to the flat route. So what does that do in this zone coverage? It creates a big void in the intermediate area going to the sideline. Beautifully executed, beautifully done. A great example of flood opposite to Kelsey against zone coverage. This particular concept, it's a staple of the Chiefs passing game, and it is something that the Eagles must be aware of. Yes, Kelsey is a great individual player, but this particular flood concept is a staple, and you will see it from the Kansas City Chiefs. So Travis Kelsey, obviously the number one target of the Chiefs offense. Eagles haven't beaten Travis Kelsey yet. He's 2-0 against his brother, Jason Kelsey. What do they need to do to try to slow him down in this Super Bowl? First of all, you got to figure out where he's at at the pre-snap, right? Because they can line him up just about anywhere. But I would expect at times there will be some bracket coverage on Travis Kelsey. You're not going to make a living covering Kelsey one-on-one. -on -one. So he's going to need some help because he's arguably the best tight end in all of football. And we have some experience in doing this from time to time this season. Let's look early in the season against the Dallas Cowboys, right? You're going to see at the snap of the ball, we got a double coverage on CeeDee Lamb on the front side. But here's what I like here. Kaiser White is also disguising in coverage. You see him at the snap of the ball, he comes up to the line of scrimmage and it's almost like he's spying. He's spying on the quarterback there. That forces Cooper Rush to hold the football. He comes off the double coverage, CeeDee Lamb on the front side. And when he comes to the back side, finally, to try to get the ball to Michael Gallup, 
He's double covered as well. The throw is a little late. It allows Darius Slate to make a great play on the interception. But the key to me for this coverage here is how they confused Cooper Rush after the snap of the football. You no, know, double coverage isn't something that's going to be new to this Kansas City offense when it comes to covering Travis Kelsey. But you have to be disciplined with the coverage because Pat Mahomes can extend the play, right? So when he extends the play, you got to make sure you stay plastered to your guy. But double coverages will be employed against Travis Kelsey. When you see these three-level stretch plays where they're flooding one zone to the outside, the common thread is they take a long time. And then a lot of these plays, they take time. Will he have that time? That's going to be the key for the Eagles to make sure that they break down the protection, to make sure that they get people around him and get hits on him. I think Andrew Wiley, the right tackle, Orlando Brown, I think these guys are going to have a lot on their plate because Jonathan Gannon's defense, he's going to come after these two tackles. And if these two tackles can't hold up, then this young quarterback, Mahomes, I know he's great, but he's going to be running for his life. Eagles game plan is brought to you by your local Tri-State Toyota dealers, proud automotive partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. NovaCare Rehabilitation, the power of physical therapy. Pepsi, Eagles watching, better with Pepsi. PA Lottery, there's a lot of love for the PA Lottery, and when you see how fun it is, you'll understand why. All right, these teams are so close in a lot of areas, but how about in the red zone? The Eagles are one of the best red zone offenses in the NFL. The Chiefs defense is the second worst in the red zone. They give up touchdowns on almost 68% of the possessions. So is that something the Eagles can take advantage of in this Super Bowl? I like to hear that, that down, they're way down the list when it comes to defending in the red zone because the Eagles are one of the best teams in all of football, especially in the low red zone. And it's the RPO factor that really keeps defenses on their heels. And if you watch this play, there's so many things that you have to be concerned about if you're on the defense. He's gonna start to the right, and look, there's a possible bubble screen to the tight end. There's a possibility of him running the football. That's certainly a possibility, but he's gonna hand it off to Miles Sanders. This thing is blocked up so well, and that's a problem for defenses. And one guy, the big guy on the Chiefs D-line, the Eagles are gonna have to watch out for is Chris Jones. He was a monster against the Bengals. He had eight pressures and two sacks. In fact, he's got the best pass rush win rate for any defensive tackle in the NFL, and he's gotten double team more than any DT in the NFL. So here is a little enemy intel on Chris Jones from Greg Cosell, presented by Golden Nugget Jewelers. So let's talk Chiefs pass rush. This is a pretty straightforward pass rush defensive front. They don't stun a lot. There's not a lot of games up front. When you get to long yarded situations, especially third down when they're in their dime defense, they will line up in a particular front and they rush the quarterback. So let's take a look at what that front is. And you're gonna see it really clearly here from the AFC Championship game. They're gonna line up with two wide nine defensive ends. Here it's Frank Clark and Carlos Dunlap. And then they're gonna line up with two kind of four eye wide three technique defensive tackles. Here, it's Chris Jones and it's Michael Dana. And you know what? They rush the quarterback. It's one-on-one. -on -one. But one thing they do a lot of in this particular front look is they'll take linebacker Nick Bolton, and he's kind of the wild card. He sort of is in position to occupy the offensive center who would be responsible for Bolton if he were part of the pressure. But with these wide four-eye defensive tackles, Jones and Dana, what you get is the center is not really in position, no matter which way he slides, to handle and help on either one of those defensive tackles. So you get one-on-one -on -one matchups. So here's Chris Jones against the right guard for the Bengals, Max Sharping. He beats him to the outside, no help at all. He gets the sack on Joe Burrow. So this is the front that the Eagles must block. Now we know the Eagles have a really strong offensive line, but we also know that the Chiefs defensive line is really, really good. And Chris Jones is the one player that can wreck your pass protection. All right, Chris Jones is a beast, and the Chiefs finished second behind the Eagles in sacks this year. Yeah. Are there other matchups here, Eagles offense versus the Chiefs defense, that you're keeping your eye on? Well, I really like the matchups on the outside, and, you know, 
the Eagles have two outstanding wide receivers. And you have to realize that Kansas City, they've got a young secondary. Sometimes they'll play three, even four rookies in their secondary. Safeties are really talented, but those rookies on the outside, I think the Eagles really have to look at a way of taking advantage of them. They'll play press coverage some, but playing press coverage on A.J. Brown, if you're not giving help, I think that can be a problem for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, A.J. is the best this year at facing press coverage, so we'll see if they do that. How about for you, big matchup? Oh, man, I'm looking at the chess matchup between mobile linebacker coach and Steve Spagnolo, who's the Kansas City defensive coordinator, going up against Shane Steichen. Now, Spags loves to use his sub packages, right? So you want to get athletes out there to try to give you an advantage against this Eagles offense. Well, I think this is where the Eagles can take advantage of these sub packages. They like to move defensive ends uh, Mike Dannon down inside, right, in that three technique position. Now, this is a guy, he plays hard, he gives you maximum effort, but he's only 250 pounds. Yeah. And going up against the interior offensive line that we have, I think that's advantage Philadelphia. And then also, Justin Reed, one of their young uh, safeties, very good, but they like to bring him in there to play linebacker in some of their dime packages. So if they look out there on the field from an Eagles offensive standpoint, and they see the sub package out there with these smaller guys up front yep. don't be surprised if we start to lean more on the running game there even if it's a third and medium situation i look for that to be an advantage for us if kansas city goes with the sub packages and they use their lighter players mm -hmm. look for us to run the ball against them hurt goes straight back he's looking he's rolling he is going deep he wants Devonte smith and it is caught hurts back Hurts firing, and it is caught for a touchdown as he guns it perfectly to Greg Ward. Hurts fires, Hurts completes it, touchdown! What I saw yesterday from him was just consistency over and over and over again, right? So, you know, you can see a lot of different guys go out there and make a splash play, but can they do it week in, week out, and can they do it consistently through the first, second, third, and fourth quarters? And that's what was impressive about Jalen's game, you know, that he continually made good plays with the football, decisions with the football. He was accurate with throws. He made some scrambles when he needed to make some scrambles. There was a time or two where I was like, ah, just stay in that pocket and rip that thing over here before you escape over here to the the other side but again I know what his strengths are too so I don't want to cage him up on that you know I don't want to put anything on him that stops him from making plays and so you know there's a fine line there all right yeah Jalen Hurts and the Eagles had a game last year against the Chiefs they lost 42 to 30 Patrick Mahomes was awesome but Jalen Hurts threw close to 400 yards in that game what did you see from Jalen against that Chiefs defense well I saw a young quarterback with a young offense that we're still searching for an identity. And that's the biggest difference from last year to where we are now. You know, those numbers can sort of mask where they really were in the development stages of the offense, particularly with Jalen. Um, and that's great that he had a, a good game in that game and put up some nice yardage, but he's so much better of a passing quarterback, a cerebral quarterback, and understanding what he wants to do with the football this year compared to where he was last year. We have an identity as an offense right now. Week four last year, I don't think there was an identity just yet. Well, in the coaching staff, understanding his strengths and weaknesses, they understand who he is now. They've tailored an offense around that skill set, which is a real smart thing to do. And by the way, there was no A.J. Brown last mm -hmm. year. And the way this offense is working now, it works really well because the coaches know all of their players a whole lot better. They know how to put them in, as coaches speak, in position to make plays. And that's what this offense is doing. The offensive line, they make it easy, I think, for the skilled position guys because this O-line is so good. It's a big difference in this team now and the team that Kansas City saw early last year. Yeah, and how are the Chiefs going to defend the Eagles' offense? Maybe a little bit of a change in the scheme, the coverage. Here is Tape Study, Fran Duffy, presented by Chickies and Pete's. So this week on Tape Study, presented by Chickies and Pete's, I wanted to do a deep dive on the Chiefs' defense and what are the challenges they could present in Sunday's Super Bowl 57 against the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, what we've known from Steve Spagnuolo, who used to coach here in Philadelphia for a long time under Andy Reid, is that in years past, he has been very heavy with man-to-man -man coverage, aggressive press man-to-man -man coverage, and on third down, a lot of two-man coverage, where you have two high safeties with that man coverage underneath, and also a lot of press 
pressure, second level defenders, third level defenders, everybody is a threat to blitz at any time. But fast forward to this season in 2022, he has been much more conservative on that side of the football. A lot more split safety looks and a lot more zone coverage where they're worried about defending the deep ball. They do not want to get beaten over the top. Now, keep in mind, the Chiefs have a lot of rookies in the secondary. Two weeks ago against the Bengals, they had four first-year players playing a lot of snaps against Joe Burrow and that vaunted passing attack. So you can expect a lot of youth here in this game against the Eagles on the back end. Now, what does that mean for this game? Again, you go to a critical situation, you're still going to get aggressive press coverage. The Chiefs play as much press as anybody in the NFL. So A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, you're going to see a plenty of contact early in the down but I would expect to see a lot of play calls like this year from the Chiefs defense where again it's not man to man but you've got three over two three Chiefs defenders over two Broncos receivers you've got two over one here on the boundary side two Chiefs defenders against one Denver Broncos receiver a lot of eyes on the quarterback so it's zone coverage and you've got a quarterback spy here as well it would not shock me here if the Chiefs on critical downs go with three man rush a quarterback spy and a whole lot of defenders here to make Jalen Hurts read things out from the pocket because if you were able to force the quarterback to hold on to the football the Chiefs this year have a lot of faith in that defensive line there's that Chris Jones guy again, number 95. He's going to come off the edge and force the pressure here on Russell Wilson. He gets home and actually forces a really ill-advised throw from Wilson that ends up being picked off by the athletic linebacker there in space. So if you are Jalen Hurts in this game, there are going to be times, yes, where they do bring pressure, especially on third down. But the Chiefs this year have been much more known to force quarterbacks to be patient, take what they are given underneath, and really matriculate the football down the field they are not as feast or famine from a pressure standpoint they're not giving up as many big plays down the field it will paint a very big matchup in this game on sunday Welcome back to Eagles Game Plan presented by Toyota. Let's get our final Super Bowl thoughts from Mike Reese and Mike Quick and Andy Reid, 3-0 against the Eagles. So can the Birds get their second Super Bowl by beating their former head coach? It's going to be fascinating. Guys, tell me, if we wake up Monday morning, biggest catalyst for the Eagles winning the Super Bowl against the Chiefs? There's no question. It'll be Jalen Hurts. Yeah. You know, if the Eagles are going to win this football game, it's going to be a Jalen Hurts type of game where he's engineering this offense, making sure that the ball goes to the right people, and they've got to throw the ball some against this team. I think it has to be Jalen Hurts. And for me, I got to go on the defensive side of the ball because I believe Patrick Mahomes is going to throw the football. They're going to put the game on his shoulders, and that's going to give an opportunity for arguably the best defensive line we've seen around the NFL in decades to have an impact on this game. And if the defensive line is going to have an impact on the game, I'm going to go with the best player on the defensive line this year, and that's Hassan Reddick. Remember the play that Brandon Graham made against <laughs> Tom Brady to win that Super Bowl okay. back in uh, 2018? Yeah. Okay. I see I'm where kinda, you're going. I'm kind of having that vision with Hassan Reddick. The best edge rusher in the game this year. He's been doing it all postseason. He has made the biggest plays in the two previous postseason games. I don't think it stops in this game. I think when we're, if we're talking about an Eagles win on Monday after this game, I think number seven has a lot to do with it. It's not the offensive line. <laughs> that could always be. Always be for the Eagles. That's always right? boring, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Two youngest quarterbacks to face off each other in a Super Bowl. Yeah. And Patrick Mahomes may be the MVP, but Jalen Hurts 16-1 and this year as the starter, the winningest quarterback. So enjoy the Super Bowl, everybody. Thanks for watching Eagles Game Plan. He's Ike Reese. He's Mike Quick. I'm John Clark. It was a great season. Hopefully the birds finish it off with their second Super Bowl. Eagles Game Plan is brought to you by your local Tri-State Toyota dealers, proud automotive partner of the Philadelphia Eagles, NovaCare Rehabilitation, the power of physical therapy, Pepsi, Eagles watching, better with Pepsi, PA Lottery, there's a lot of love for the PA Lottery, and when you see how fun it is, you'll understand why.